Sometimes we all just need to wear a hat. Hey, how's it going? I'm gonna talk about sublimating baseball caps today. And there are a couple of different ways that I've seen from research to do it. One, what seemed to be the easiest way is to just sub directly onto a cap. But I've found that those caps tend to be um, truck stoppy-ish. I don't mean that in a bad way. Is that a word? Truck stoppy-ish? Anyway, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean that's not the type of hat that I wanted. And so uh, the next uh, option for me was a patch. Now you can buy patches already made that have the little um, edges uh, sewn in. Um, I didn't like that because the patches were very white and I was nervous about being able to get that sublimation at the edge and it not look like a sublimated patch. And uh, quite frankly, if I had a sewing machine, you know, I'd probably attempt to do it myself. But the one thing I know about sewing machines is they can stab you in the finger fast a lot. So no sewing machine for me. Anyway, a couple of different hat options that I like are just the regular hats with the, uh, the adjustable back. This hat was a $1 clearance hat at Walmart. Uh, all of them weren't um, uh, on clearance, and this one actually said $4.97, but I used the app to scan it and it had clearance for a dollar. So I got a bunch of those. And then of course, this is another hat I picked up from somewhere. Same thing, um, different type of backing. And then there are cadet caps, and I've gotten a few of these as well. Um, and patches go quite well on, on any of those. So I decided, let's do a patch. How do you do a patch? Well, I found there's a material, it's 100% poly uh, linen type material and you can get it Hobby Lobby. So in order to get something on this head, let's go to Hobby Lobby and grab it. All right, let's go into uh, Hobby Lobby and see if we can get that material. Okay, it's back in the fabric section. Um, okay, it's down this aisle. It looks like um, furniture fabric. Uh, the furniture fabric section. And the one that I get is this one. It's uh, Dynasty NP New Linen. Dynasty NP New Linen. And the number is 125. One seven seven six. Okay, my work here is done. We've got the material and we're heading home. Okay, we've got the, I'm sorry, this hair is killing me. We have the material from Hobby Lobby. Now it's time to go on the computer and create a design or two or three. Okay, let's create a design. I'm using Photoshop Elements. I have full Photoshop, but the Elements version I just like better. So I'm creating a new blank file. I use inches and I make mine eight and a half by 11 because that's the paper size I usually print uh, to. So I just know that that's what, how everything's gonna fit easily. And then I typically, I am not a trained Photoshop person. I learned on my own, so I do it probably a little differently. But I, I create a blank layer and I make it white and I use that as my background. Uh, that way, anything I see is just more aesthetically pleasing. So, now I'm going to pick me a font. I'm going to create the words I want to use. And I like, in this particular case, uh, from a creative standpoint, I like the words to be the same distance, the same width. So what I'll do is go into this particular file and um, highlight the bottom uh, word, survivor, and then just make it a little bit larger. And then you'll notice that the uh, top and bottom uh, lines are too close, so I'll go into the, the leading edge and, and change that a little bit so they fit. Now I'm going to create a border, and what I'll do is I'll go to the rectangle tool and uh, create a box that's similar to the size that I want it to be. This is what the outside of this box is going to be what the inside of the uh, of the the border will be. So I'll get that as close as possible, as close as I think um, I want it. And then I'll go in and I'll uh, make it 100% uh, opacity and then duplicate it. And I really should have uh, simplified the image before I did that. Uh, what I have to do now is just simplify both of them. In this case, I just hit the eraser tool, click on it, and it says, do you want to simplify it? And then I'm gonna go in and take the top layer and change colors to a light color and then highlight the, the second layer and 
just pull it out on all four sides. And that basically is gonna be the size of the border. So once I've created this, I will highlight the uh, top light layer and then I'll select the second layer, hit delete, and that'll take out that um, interior section. And then of course I can get rid of the top layer and that's what I've got. And then I'll just combine those two layers. And once I've combined those two layers, that's my final, uh, my final uh, patch. Now what I like to do is add a border, uh, I'll call it a cut border for lack of anything else. So I'll know where to cut it once I have printed it out um, on the material, once I've sublimated it onto the, onto the material. What I'm doing is I'm creating a new rectangle to create my cut line. And then once I've created the rectangle, I can go into stroke and add a, a, an outer border and then just make that stroke uh, as wide as I want to. And then simplify the layer, delete the inside, and I've got a, a cut border. And then once I finished with the border and the cut border, we'll create some more images. And then we'll save as, and I'll save this as a PNG file. And then we'll just print it out. Uh, don't forget before you print it to uh, flip it and, and then print it out. Sometimes I'll flip them before I save them. I have to be real, real careful because I'm not consistent. Anyway, I pick my printer, make sure it's at 100% and print the file out. And then once it's printed out, we'll take it and we will go to the heat press and we're going to put the, the a, a cut piece of the material down and I will do a little light press on it. And we will. I like lining it up. We're going to do it for 60 seconds. Release it. Well, that paper just came off, didn't it? And I usually give it a second or two, and then pull it up. And there you have it. It's hot. Can't wait to have me a meatball sub. Sorry, my wife's cooking <clears throat> meatballs for meatball subs tonight. So, we have the material and we've sublimated onto it. And so now we're going to, um, we're going to cut it out and it'd probably be good if I had a scissor right now, but will you go get me a scissor? Excellent, thanks. Okay, so here is the design that we um, did. Well, all of them, but the one that we started with was the <clears throat> Creek Survivor. And I'm going to cut it out. And we're going to just cut just inside that template line that I had made. And this is where it comes in really handy. I know it took a second on the computer to do it, but look at how easy this is. As long as I don't cut my finger off, we're all good. And easy peasy. Okay, there's that. Now, what we're going to do is, I, I know there are a lot of people that can probably weed a lot better than me, but I have found that um, my sister-in-law, thank you, Claudia, actually told me that if you take a little bit of water and then just wet the edge, it'll weed really fast. Now, the downside is it, we, it does it so well that you can easily pull too much. So what I typically do is weed as close as I can to where I need to stop and then let it dry and finish it. And, and if, if that doesn't make any sense, well, welcome to my world. Uh, anyway, we're going to weed this and, uh, and then we'll, um, anyway, we're going to weed this. Okay, so we finished weeding. Um, I'm going to take a, 
a scissor and trim a little bit of this. It looks like it just didn't want to come off. And that's it. Now, here's the trick. I take a scrap piece of paper and flip it upside down and then use this stuff called uh, Dritz Fray Check. And uh, basically it stops it from fraying. So what I'll do is I'll run a little bead along the edge of where I frayed it. And that is supposed to stop the fraying. Now, I think it's just a type of glue or something. I don't know. It works though. And I think you're supposed to let this dry for a couple of, I don't know, I'm making it up. An hour, two hours, I'll look and see. And then I'll let it dry. Okay, this is the adhesive that I bought on Amazon. Um, I'll show you uh, what it looks like. But basically, there's a dull side and uh, a shiny side, and it's Caesar Sizer um, uh, adhesive. Works quite well. You just have to cut a piece the size of the patch without the fray. So we'll do that real quick. Okay, so we have our patch cut out. We've got it frayed. We've got the anti-fray on the back, and then we've got our little adhesive cut out as well. Now, we're gonna take this to the heat press and we're gonna uh, heat, uh, heat press it. We're gonna press it for, I, I think like five or six seconds, I've got it written down in there at 300 degrees. And you wanna make sure that you do the mat side against the back of the material. Mat side against the back and shiny side up. Okay, let's go do that. Here's our patch. I'm gonna lay it upside down. And then you've got to remember to put the matte side, if you can tell the difference, that's matte and that's shiny. You want to put the matte side down um, on the uh, material. And then I want to cover it up and make sure that it's pushed in. And I'm going to do this for 300 degrees for about 10 seconds. Eight, nine. 10. Now let's pop it up and see what happened. And we'll pull this off. And as you can see, there it is. It kind of stuck a little bit to the, um, the paper, but that's done now. That is now a patch ready to be sewn onto a, uh, onto a hat or anything else for that matter. I need a hat. Okay, here's what I've done. I've added the adhesive backing to several of these. Here's the one that we've been working on since the beginning. Um, and then a couple of the other ones that I'll, I'll be adding to baseball caps. But here's the thing. At this point in time, it's a patch. Okay, any place you put a patch, that's what this is now. With this adhesive backing, it is essentially a patch. I'm gonna put them all on baseball caps, but if you can think of some other uh, location that you could put a patch, then have at it. Let's put it on. Okay, I've got the heat press set at 350. I'd like to do 300, but it's a finicky little press, so I'm doing 350. Do you want to clean off the hat a little bit? I'm going to try to work this without getting in the way of a camera. I'm going to set this down. I like giving it a little pre-press just to make sure that it uh, is nice and flat. One, two. This is a cheap heat press and it won't go up high enough for me to be able to easily lift this and turn it. So I literally have to raise it and lower it um, when I pull it up and down. But anyway, it is what it is. All right, I'll give it another second or two. Now, here's our patch All right, with the material on the back. You have to take a piece of plastic off of this but right before you press it. We'll do it here in a second. Let's pull this up. Let me turn this. And slide it over and it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a wrinkle in it, but I think I can pull that out. So 
Okay, so what I'm going to do with the patch is I'm going to I'm going to take a little bit of heat tape, and what I like to do is fold a little teeny bit back, and then put it on here. That way I'll be able to easily peel it off. Well, not that easily. I'll be able to easily peel it off from the patch. I'm do that on both sides if I can, and then we're gonna we're gonna do that. Make sure that's on there real good. Now, always, I, I forgot to do this once and kind of ruined a hat. It's got a little teeny piece of plastic on the back of it and your adhesive is underneath that. So you gotta pull that adhesive off. And then, and it's not sticky yet because it's not been heated. So what we'll do, excuse me while I get in the, in the way here. Uh, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put this down Make sure you have a little bit of blowout paper. We're going to slide this back and put that down 12. We'll push this thing back and we're only going to do about 15 seconds. All right, let's see, if, see what we got. There we go. Looks great. Okay, well, we've made a couple of hat patches. Um, here's one baseball cap. Here's uh, another one that we did. And of course, this is the one we did from start to finish. And my hair is not normally like this. So I want you guys to know that I definitely have needed a hat. So there you have it. Hey, we all need a hat every once in a while. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned a little bit. Feel free to leave comments in the comments below. And um, if you have any ideas for anything else you'd like to see, please let me know. If you like this video, if you don't mind giving it a thumbs up and certainly subscribe to the channel as we'll be having a lot of really cool stuff coming up soon. Have a great day. I can't believe this hair. You let me with this hair all day? What? My wife's looking at me like I'm crazy.